Hi, welcome to Inkscape for Teachers. I'm Jeff Phillips and in this tutorial I'll be looking at producing matrices using Inkscape. Now I know that you can produce all sorts of equation editor objects using Microsoft's equation editor. It's an inbuilt function of Microsoft Word. But look, sometimes that can be quite buggy, they can be hard to edit and hard to uh, get to the right size and format uh, individual elements of different colours and things like that within a, an equation editor object. So though it might take a bit more time to set up matrices in Inkscape, I think overall you've got more flexibility and um, you know, once it's done you can put it anywhere, resize it easily, edit it uh, far more easily and so forth. So let's get started. I'll open up a blank Inkscape file, apart from my logo and promotion for my website mathspro.com. Please visit that and support us if you're looking for rulers and templates. First thing is we use the Bezier tool and I'll click Control to constrain a horizontal or vertical line, just a short movement. Click again, just estimate, click and come across. I'll deliberately go across a different distance horizontally and press enter to finish off my matrix line. Now I'm pretty happy with that line thickness but if you're not you can look at the stroke style menu, bring it up by Control shift f or clicking on this icon here. You can change the width at same 0.265 there, I'll leave that for a moment, but that can be changed. Now, I want really those horizontal little bits to be the same size, so I'm going to drag a ruler across, a line from the, oops, a line from the ruler, you click in the ruler and drag to the right. If I continue to drag that till it locks on. It's locking onto the path there, I'll come from the other direction and I think that's locked on. If I zoom in, control and mouse, well no it isn't locked on. You can see that lines past the guide. I'm just going to have a look at my snapping options up here. Snap to smooth nodes, I don't think that's going to help. Snap to centres of objects, hmm, not sure. Let's have a look at uh, this one. If I turn that, turn that on, oh, I was already on I think. No. Oh, it might be over here. Enable snapping. No, that's turned off all snapping tools. Then this subset I'll enable. And this snaps to oh, to do with the bounding box, which isn't going to help. This set snap to paths. Oh, that's on. Snap path intersections, cusp nodes, smooth nodes, midpoints of segments. Mm. Look, I think it should be where I'll try again and it's zoomed in. If I move this out, snap into, there it is there. It's just a bit um, cantankerous. I was fiddling around for no reason, but anyway, we got there. I'll uh, scroll down, hold the mouse wheel and scroll up. And you can see that this part of the matrix uh, bracket is past the guide. So if I click that once, then click the node tool or hit N and I can hold down control to constrain horizontal. I'll move back to lat snaps to the guide. Back to the select tool. I'll press 1 to zoom 1 to 1. Click and recenter my workspace and there you go. I'll double click on the guide and delete that. So it might have been a bit fiddly but once you've got one you can um, then manipulate this one. You'll not have to draw it from scratch again. If I select it Control D to duplicate and reflect that in a vertical axis. Control drag, something like that. So there's my set of matrix, matrix brackets, large square brackets. Don't worry too much about the spacing, we can adjust that later and we can stretch these, you know, make them longer if we need to. Using the text tool, I'll click on that and I'll just type a number in here. Oops, it's snapped, but it doesn't matter. Naught, uh, let's type naught. Look, well, I might turn off the snapping tools. I'll turn them all off in one hit by that icon up there. Now notice that it can drag it without any annoying snapping. If you're happy with that font size, and look, I might increase that a bit. I'll open up the text and font menu, and I'm going to change that to, well, let's see how 20 looks. You know, I've just changed it to 20, I thought no change on screen, that's because in this particular toolbox I have to click apply that's better. 
So I'll leave that. Control duplicate. Control to keep it horizontal. Control duplicate. Control to keep it horizontal. I'll deliberately make that not spaced out. Well, actually, <laughs> pretty hard to make it look too bad, but um, you know, let's say something like that's not spaced perfectly. So I'll drag a marquee just around those three. Under the Align and Distribute menu, which is if it's not present on the right on your screen, you can click this icon up here or Control Shift A. Just a word of warning, sometimes the shortcuts don't work if you've got another screen capture program or something that already uses that as a hotkey combination. Now if I click on Distribute those horizontally, there we go. Once that's done, I'm going to group it, Control G for group. And now that that's one group, See those brackets look about the right spacing apart. I can change those if I have to, you know, back and forwards. I'll just leave it like that. I'm going to group them as well. So control, sorry, click to select one bracket, shift to collect the other one, to collect, select, and a control G to group. So I've got two groups, the brackets group and the first row group. If I shift click to select both of those, I'm going to align those on a vertical axis centrally, that one, and the one, but if I did the one below it's going to do that, which I don't want, so I'll control Z and worry about uh, the vertical spacing when I've got all three rows, so I'll click the row, control D to duplicate, control to drag it down a bit, I'll deliberately be imprecise with this just to show you how I can correct, control D and control way down to, perhaps I should get that roughly right, now if I shift click to select all of those and I'll distribute them vertically using this button. If I want it a bit lower in the matrix brackets I could change that or higher. Look, I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe if I click on that and a couple of arrows on the keyboard to rise up, do it again. Shift click to select them all and distribute them vertically using this icon. Now I'm going to go Control G to group all of those, and I'll shift chick, shift chick, shift click the square brackets to select those, and I'll centre them up using these two icons over here. Didn't really move it much; I must have had it pretty close. So there we have a pretty good-looking matrix. Now I can ungroup these if I want to edit them individually, but you can still get at parts of a group by double-clicking. I think if on a particular. Try again. Sometimes you click off and then try again, yeah, and it lets me select it. The other thing, I'll go back to select tool, the other way of doing that is just to type T for the text tool or click the text tool down here and it automatically zeroes in on text within, and you don't have to do it each time, you can go across and change all those, so I can change that to you know, whatever I want to, I'll just go consecutive numbers, which is probably a bad idea if you're making up matrices for students to explain, say, multiplication, you get into some pretty big uh, calculations pretty quickly but for the sake of this video it doesn't really matter yeah, I have edited that of course I can drag a marquee around the whole lot control D to duplicate control to drag across I've got another one there now I know you can use X's and things for multiplication signs or equals for equal signs I prefer the flexibility of um, designing my own, so if I click the Bezier Pen tool, click Control, click taps there, and enter. Yeah, that's okay. I'll zoom in a bit, Control, mouse wheel, Control, duplicate, Control to come down, Control, mouse wheel, back. That's okay, maybe they're a little bit long. Drag around, Control, G. Zoom in and control shift to uh, control just to no just sorry just drag to shorten it a bit. Control mouse wheel and that's okay. I'll drag that up there. I can use the align and distribute tool, but G by I it's pretty good anyway. I don't know why I put it there. It should be a multiplication sign there. I'll control drag across to here equals multiplication sign. I can design one of those quickly. Click, hold down control to force 45 degree, in, 45 degree increments. 
click and enter. I know it looks big, but don't worry for now. Click on that, control duplicate, reflect it in a vertical axis. Drag around, well I didn't really have to, they were both selected, Control g to group. Hold down Control shift to constrain proportions, until you're happy with that. Again, maybe it looks a bit big. I'll just Control shift to drag it in a bit more. Mouse wheel, and drag it up there. Now I can continue uh, producing different matrices if I wanted to have a column matrix over here, if I click on these it's part of a group. One thing you can do is you can control to click on an element within a group and then I'll see if I can control sorry, um, start again, control click so control click on that, then control D to duplicate then control to drag, yep and that lets me pull it out from the group. I could. Um, but it does remain part of the same group, which is a bit annoying. So I'll go object. I'm looking for ungroup. There it is. Now, if I click on that one, it's individual. So if you don't do that, you can drag it around, but it drags the whole group. So you've got to be careful. Control duplicate. Reflect that in a vertical axis. Control drag to about there for a column matrix. Again, I can use the control trick and control shift select several and then control oops what did I forget to do control D for duplicate then control drag across of course if I click on those it's part of the whole group so I just go one level of ungrouping the rest remain grouped if I do this but object ungroup now if I click on it's interesting it's part of uh, that group Maybe if I go object ungroup again, and that's okay. This one, yeah, I've got myself in a bit of a pickle here. Just ungroup again. That one's, yeah, I've ungrouped all those too, but look, we can regroup them later. This one, control shift G to ungroup quickly. And there it is, okay. I'm not really fussed whether these numbers are grouped or ungrouped because as I click on the text tool, I can click on that and I can do highlight ones in part, that are part of groups or that are part, not part of groups so it doesn't really matter okay that's uh, look I could show you um, how I produce the rest in this other file here if I go back there but it's the same sort of thing a little reminder to myself down here control and paste into Word just to show you drag a marquee control C open up Word, I've already had it open so it'll open pretty quickly Control V to paste and well, that looks a bit uh, bit large but you can hold down I think you have to hold down Shift in Word and drag a corner to drag it to a, a good size now at the moment my default in Word is to paste in place so I can't really drag this around easily but if I click on it then right click and wrap test text and put it either behind or in front there's no text behind or in front so it doesn't matter but either of those options let's say in front of text then I can drag it around anywhere on the page and that helps me line it up with you know text that might be in word I'll just give an example and you know often when you paste into word when you set to inline it might be like that or like that, but now that I've clicked in front of text I can get things you know, nicely centred and where I want them. That's why I prefer to put in a matrix as a an, uh, an object pasted into Word that's floating in front of text. Let's go back to the final or the opening screen. That concludes the tutorial. I hope that you uh, find that some use and as always, thanks for watching.